Hi, my name is Robert Rosenson. I'm a professor of medicine at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. I just completed my presentation at the International Academy of Cardiology in Boston, Massachusetts, where I discussed the genetics of statin-associated muscle symptoms. In my lecture, I discussed the need to encourage people to get back on statins, but recognizing that some people may not be able to tolerate statins, most often due to adverse muscle complaints. What are the issues? If you have a myocardial infarction or you're at a high-risk individual, and you down titrate or discontinue the statins, your risk for having a recurrent myocardial infarction increases by 50% at two years. And hospitalizations for cardiovascular events increase by 51%. Over a longer period of time, you have a higher mortality. So we need to understand why do people down titrate? Why do they discontinue? Most often, they have side effects that they perceive are related to the medication. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. In order to get a better understanding, we have to have clear definitions of statin-associated muscle symptoms. It's a spectrum. Maybe myalgia, aches with a normal CK, maybe myopathy, a weakness. Maybe myonecrosis, as detected by a high creatinine kinase level, or muscle inflammation, the myositis. The pathological hallmarks of those different entities differ, and also the genetics differ. We've had the opportunity to look at certain genetic traits that may predispose individuals to statin-associated muscle symptoms, or SAMs. It may be that uh, there are certain pathways that uh, decrease the elimination of statins due to drug-drug interactions, the well-known cytochrome P453A4 uh, pathway, as well as other cytochrome pathways. They may have an impact on the vitamin D receptor, which puts them at increased risk for myopathy. Or there may be the inability to eliminate the stands from the liver, resulting in uh, poor metabolism, higher blood levels, that increase the exposure of the skeletal muscle to higher levels of statins. Then turn our attention to the genome-wide association studies. And there we uh, focus on the SEARCH study, which identified a trait that was associated with myo necrosis, high CK levels greater than 10 times the upper limits of normal. And individuals that had the SCLO1B1 trait had this higher risk. They had an inability to metabolize the statins or eliminate them effectively. There have been other pathways identified as well, ones that are involved in pain and inflammation. And these uh, studies uh, in large part came from the Godart study and the Jupiter study may have an HLA uh, issue. Certainly, there's a uh, condition which is uh, an autoimmune condition that's identified as uh, an antibody to HMG-CoA reductase, the rate limiting step in cholesterol biosynthesis. You may be put on a statin, and unlike most cases of SAMs, or statin-associated muscle symptoms, these symptoms don't resolve, and people have persistent high creatinine kinase levels. And it was identified that they have a autoimmune response. But these genetic abnormalities identify few individuals. And many more individuals do experience adverse muscle symptoms upon blinded re-challenge in controlled clinical trials. And this requires us to look at omics. There's a very interesting paper by Alam published in PLOS1 on transcript omics that identified multiple different gene networks that interact that may cause some individuals to have myalgia, some to have myopathy, some to have myalgia and myopathy. But the picture is still incomplete. And future work will require us to look at uh, proteomics and metabolomics and lipidomics to get a better understanding as to why some individuals are prone to adverse muscle symptoms with statins that will, of course, leave them at higher risk. And after we identify those individuals, what types of solutions can we provide to lower their LDL cholesterol and lower their cardiovascular risk? Thank you for the opportunity. There you go, perfect. Five minutes.